Hey there. Welcome to chapter three. In geometry is chapter three. We're going to be looking at what happens when we take two lines and have them be cut or intersected by a third line. Uh, typically, this is called the parallel lines and a transversal. And this can be a lot of our focus in this chapter. But to start out this chapter, we're going to start with basic pairs of lines and angles. And this is how we really introduce the concepts. So before we can actually get to parallel lines and a transversal, we have to talk about these key vocab words. First and foremost are two, line, two definitions that you know very well, or at least should know. The first of which is parallel lines. Now you're already familiar with parallel lines. These are lines that do not intersect and are coplanar. The coplanar piece is something that's newer to us now that we understand what coplanar is. It's important to keep that in mind, uh, that, that these lines are going to end up being, they're not just going the same direction and never going to touch, they're also on the same plane. Uh, an example of that, if we were looking over at our little diagram here, I could start out with any line, but maybe I'm going to start out with the line AD. Maybe I'm going through that line there. If I want a line that's parallel to it, again, thinking parallel means they're never going to touch, but they're also coplanar. I might end up going with the line that's right next to it on the same top, BC. So these are two lines that would end up being parallel because they're going in the same direction, they never touch, and they're still on the same plane. That part really is important. Looking at our next definition, perpendicular lines. Now this isn't something we've worked with as much, but we're definitely going to be working with a little bit more here and uh, throughout geometry. So perpendicular lines are lines that intersect to form right angles. And there really is nothing more to that. I like to think of perpendicular as the exact opposite of parallel. Parallel lines never intersect. Perpendicular lines always intersect, and they intersect perfectly. If I was looking for an example over in our diagram, uh, while there are no boxes, remember that typically when we go to look for a right angle, we will have a box in the little corner. And that's what tells us that we're dealing with a right angle. There are no boxes drawn in on this diagram, but I do want you to know that essentially this is supposed to be a cube. And a cube is made up of squares, squares which have right angles. So all I have to do really for this example is find two lines that intersect in a corner. In this particular case, maybe I'm looking at the straight up and down line. Maybe it's uh, AE. AE could be my straight up and down line, and then what happens from that is it meets EF. In a square or even in a cube, this corner right here would be a right angle. So in this case, AE and EF are the two perpendicular lines because not only do they intersect, but they intersect to form a right angle. Next up is something that's newer to us. It's called skew lines. Skew itself is not too difficult. I just want you to think uh, kind of like road lines, if you will. Skew lines are lines that do not intersect and are not coplanar. The easiest way to think about it, in my opinion, is to think of an overpass. Perhaps some of you are familiar with the major overpasses of major highways. Uh, to the north in South Bend, Indiana, there's a portion of road where US 31 meets US 20, and you have what's called an overpass. It essentially looks like a giant bridge going over the road, and you see cars crossing over it all the time to continue down the other highway. That's essentially what skew lines are. One line going above or below another line. See, they're never going to intersect because, in fact, they're never coplanar. Finding an example of this is not too difficult over here. Maybe I can pick a different line. Um, suppose I'm looking at FG. Let's pick FG to be our initial line. Now, what we're looking for is a line that's either going to go above or below it, basically cross over. Um, we can't pick anything that's down here because those lines would either be parallel or perpendicular, so that doesn't fit. And essentially, I have to pick something up here, but we can't pick, uh, like, we can't pick BC, we can't pick AD because those would basically be parallel. 
Although technically speaking, AD would work uh, because it's never going to intersect FG and it's not coplanar. We like to think of lines like AB because what I want you to see is most skew lines are going to be lines that go right over the other. And AB is perfect for this. What we're essentially seeing is that AB is going to go right over our line FG. So, or you could say that FG is sliding under AB, whichever one. But that's what skew is. It really is like an overpass. One line is crossing over the other. Last but not least, we have parallel planes. And honestly, this is an easy concept. If parallel lines are lines that never intersect, parallel planes are planes that never intersect. So you can pretty much see the planes that never intersect. But let's go back to naming them. Remember that you need three points to name a plane. And maybe I want to start with this top plane. I could name it A, B, and C. Because what these points are going to do is they're going to give me the overall shape of that plane. So plane A, B, C. And by going from one point to the next, I actually create a sort of box up here. It's more of a square, really. But it'll create this top plane, if you will, this top surface. So if I'm going to name my bottom plane, because we're looking for planes that never intersect, I can follow that sort of corresponding uh, point layout, if you will. I started with A, I went to B, and then I went back to C. And all I have to do is follow that order. So I can start at E, go to F, then go back to G. E, F, G. And these are the parallel planes, with a little bit of refresh on how to name planes. So these are our key words, parallel lines, perpendicular lines, skew lines, and parallel, li uh, parallel planes. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to come down here, we're going to try to apply this in order to find these um, examples of these things. So for example, in example one, we're going to use the figure below to identify each of the following, a pair of parallel lines, a pair of skew lines, and a pair of perpendicular lines. And this is just to help us move around a shape. What we're trying to do right now is, one, review how to name lines. But also, number two, figure out how to work our way around a shape and work with the vocab. A pair of parallel lines. So remember, parallels going in the same direction, they're never going to cross. They're never going to intersect. If I were you, I'd play it safe. We can start out with CD on the top, or if you will, DC. We can start with DC on the top, and if we're looking for a line that's parallel to this, we don't really need to look much further than AB. Because if we use DC, we want something that's going in these directions forever, never going to cross. And honestly, AB is just right there for the taking. So these two are parallel lines. Notice again that I am actually using my... my symbol notation. I'm using my geometric notation. I want to because these are lines. They're not just segments. These are definitely lines. Now a pair of skew lines. Skew can be all kinds of things. Uh, by the way, there's no right or wrong answer to this. You can find your own examples uh, as well. Suppose that I start with DC just like I had. Maybe we just keep going back to DC. DC is the given line. And remember that skew, basically, I'm thinking road overpass. I'm looking for one line to, to go over or under this line. And probably one of the better ones is probably this front one, EH. That one would work out very well. You could have also done FG in the back. And if you did FG, that's right, too. Both of these lines are uh, skew to my DC. Now, if you wanted to, it is important to know that you could have also done lines that actually cross over like this. You could have had AH or BG, because they're also basically going to go to the right of my line DC. So there's plenty uh, of examples of skew lines. It's not just the, the examples that I came up with, but it is often easier to think about you know, lines going over or under another. A pair of perpendicular lines. Once again, we can start with DC. Remember what perpendicular means. Perpendicular means that these two lines form a right angle. 
And you know the definition of a right angle means it's 90 degrees. So all we have to do is find a 90 degree box marking. Well, if I look at my diagram once again, I started with DC. I'm looking for a box marking along here, and man, if I did not just see one, it's right there. So we just need to know what line this is. Well, I see point D and I see point A. There you have it, DA. And that's our pair of perpendicular lines. Moving this on up, we're going to look at a more complex diagram, uh, but a diagram I enjoy nonetheless. This is called a pentagonal prism, but I do not expect you all to remember that. We'll be looking at prisms later on in chapter 11 when we talk about uh, volume and surface area. But for now, this is just, again, helping us name lines and review this vocab. So here's what we want to find. We want to find all of the segments parallel to an S. We want to find a plane that's parallel to plane JKL. And we want to find four segments that are skewed to RQ. Now we're going to get kind of creative with this. First things first, find all segments parallel to NS. First, find NS. NS is this segment right here. Now recall the definition of parallel. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to simplify it down and make it precise. You know that parallel segments are segments that never intersect. But don't forget, now we're going to add in that these segments are coplanar to our initial segment. So in this case, I can only pick line segments that are on the same plane. Well, if I do that, I can move from NS up to uh, RMR. That would be one. But NS is also like the right side of this other box shape down here, this rectangle. So that means I can also go down, and this is JO. These are our two parallel lines. Now, I do want you to know that later on in the chapter, we will actually discuss a way to show that NS is also parallel to LQ and KP. But right now, we're just going to stick with the definition at hand, which says they're coplanar. Now, finding a plane parallel to plane JKL. Well, first of all, find JKL. Remember what I said about naming a plane? We need three points. And what these three points do is they tell us the face or the shape that we're looking at. Well, if I didn't know any better, I'd say that JKL were helping make up this pentagon on the front. This thing. So if we want to find something that is par parallel to this, we need to find another shape of the same that's never going to intersect it. Now, in that case, it's going to be this pentagon back here. There are probably dozens of ways that we could name this pentagon back here. But I'm going to use my first pentagon to help me name that second one. Notice that the order was specific. We started at J, went to K, and then jumped up to L. We can follow that same order in the back. So I'm going to start at O, go to P, and then go up to Q. That is the plane that's parallel to my plane JKL. O, P, Q. Hopefully that makes sense. Just follow the order and that will help out a lot. Parallel planes, not too difficult. You're just looking for two planes that will never intersect. That's all they are. Looking at C, we need to find four skew segments to RQ. Now RQ is right here. I want to point out real quick, remember what skew means. Basically one line is crossing over or under this line. And there are a number of examples. But one thing I want you to keep in mind is if it is going to intersect this line in any way, shape, or form, it's automatically out. So in our case here, uh, SR touches that line, PQ touches that line, LQ touches that line, and MQ touches that line. So those are four examples that cannot be, um, they, they cannot be um, skew. Another thing to keep in mind is that skew lines do not intersect and they're not coplanar, right? Um, 
it would be the coplanar part that I'm trying to get to. Because we don't want something that's on the same side of RQ that also rules out SO and OP. If you can rule out the sides that you can't have, you can easily find the sides that you do have. And I want to point out right now that the number of sides that are good, well, let's see. Um, NS is not, it's not going to intersect RQ, and it's not coplanar. NM is not coplanar. Um, watch out for ML, though. Notice that ML is actually coplanar to RQ. I did miss that one. LK is not coplanar. Uh, KP is not. NJ, JK, JO. There's a ton of examples in here that are all uh, perfectly fine skew lines. So I could use, I want to use NS because NS looks like it's about to go under RQ. And I can do the same thing with KP. That would work as well. I can also use uh, LK. LK looks like it's about to cross over it. And if I really want to, we could sneak on in there JO because JO is about to go under it, and that works as well. So you'll notice, um, first of all, there's several examples that I didn't include. We only need to name four skew lines, but there's more than that. So there's any number of combinations of lines that I could actually have for this example. But what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to move on to the next page. Now we're going to get to the meat of our Chapter 3 first topic, so to speak. When I look at uh, pairs of angles formed by two intersecting lines, this is just the tiptoe. This is like the tip of the iceberg, if you will, to what we're going to be doing. This goes back to chapter one. Don't forget this. We talked about vertical angles and linear pairs back in chapter one, and we talked about what they were. Vertical angles, if you remember, are like angles one and three. If you're looking at the diagram, notice that 1 and 3 are across from each other in my intersection. If that's the case and all I'm looking for are those opposite, I can also do 2 and 4. Angles 2 and 4 are also vertical angles. One of the things I really want to drill into you at this point in time is that vertical angles are always congruent. In other words, if I have two angles that are vertical, I can always set their measures equal to each other. So in this particular case, another way of saying this is, suppose that the measure of angle 1 is like 63 degrees. That means 3 is going to be 63 degrees too. And if I had expressions for these, I could write an equation and solve. We can't forget that. Linear pairs, on the other hand, linear pairs are like angles 1 and 2 or angles 3 and 4. But you could also focus on the other sides of them, find the straight lines, and say, hey, angle 2 and angle 3 are also a linear pair. Now, more students, more times than not, remember this, because these two angles make a straight line. And a straight line is the same thing as a straight angle, which has 180 degrees. Now, in this particular case, since we have a pair of angles that add up to 180, we call that supplementary. But this is just review for us because we talked about supplementary angles in chapter 2 a little bit. What I want you to know as we start getting more and more into chapter 3 is that our angle relationships are going to be one of these two things. Our angle pairs are either going to be congruent to each other or they're going to be supplementary. That is so important to remember. But we're going to use our vertical and linear pair angles later on to help us really kind of figure out um, what angle measures are. But this is everything right here. What we're about to introduce to you is like a key idea. Call it that. We've talked about parallel and perpendicular lines. We talked about skew lines, perpendicular uh, parallel planes. But compared to these words, those are like easy. These are the key words of chapter 3, and they're going to play a role in this section, section 3.2, section 3.3. We'll see it again in probably 3.4. They are important. So it's important to know what a transversal is. I mentioned that word earlier because I said parallel lines and transversals. What is a transversal? 
A transversal is a line that intersects. It is an intersecting line. A line that intersects two or more other lines at different points. A transversal is just that. It is a line that intersects two or more other lines at different points. In my example over here to the right, notice that I do have two lines, but they're both being cut by a one line. And that line up here is line T. Ironically, T standing for transversal. Now it's gonna, imagine it as though it's like a knife cutting through two sticks of butter. A transversal is meant to cut like a knife. Uh, it cuts through two lines or more, but mostly we'll just see two lines. Now corresponding angles, I'm going to try and simplify these four angle relationships down for you as much as I can, but this is one, two, three, and four. We're going to learn about four new angle relationships. Corresponding angles. Corresponding angles, I would say, are basically angles that have corresponding positions. Angles that have corresponding positions. And I could, I could give you example after example all day long. If we were looking at our example over here, again, I'm looking to the right. One example of corresponding angles, suppose I start with the angle one. Now, what I want you to notice is that in this intersection, it is in the top left angle. And if we go over to our second intersection down here, we're looking for the top left again, that's going to be angle 5. This is what corresponding angles are. They basically have the same position. So if I really went and looked at like angle 3 down here, angle 3 is in the bottom right. I want to find the bottom right again, and that's going to be angle 7. So angle 3 and angle 7 are another example of corresponding angles. Basically think same position. What are alternate interior angles? This one's a bit tougher, but it breaks down like this. I might say that they are angles. I'm going to I'm going to do this in a bullet point style. These are angles that are inside inside the two lines. but on opposite sides of the transversal. So if I go over and I look at what I have, keep in mind like this, I love this diagram over here because it really does kind of give you an idea of where the interior is, where the exterior is. If we're looking for the interior, angles, we're going to be in this green area here. Alternate exterior, or alternate interior. Suppose that I start with angle 4. Now, the point of this being interior is that I want to stay inside these two lines. But it being on the opposite side, I want you to understand that it's not going to be 3. By opposite side of this, we also mean across the way. So the angle that is alternate interior with angle 4 is angle 6. And in the same way, you could do it with angle 3. Angle 3 is inside. If you want the alternate interior, you got to go across the way to 5. So angle 3 and angle 5 are both, uh, they're, they're alternate interior angles as well. Alternate exterior angles. This is actually, <laughs> this is very similar to what we just did. Alternate means the same thing, opposite sides of the transversal, but think about what exterior means. In this case, because we're saying exterior, we are outside the two lines. Outside the two lines, but we are still on opposite sides of the transversal.
Call me crazy if you will, but I'd like to point out now the importance of knowing what the transversal is. Uh, several of these definitions revolve around knowing what the transversal is. So it is very important that you remember it's a line that intersects other lines at different points. If I was to use uh, examples of this, again, we're talking about exterior angles, so we're going to be outside. We're going to be out in the boondocks. And maybe suppose I'm starting with angle one. Again, we're talking about alternate exterior, which means opposite side. I'm not going to be working with the two, and I'm not going to be working with the eight. I have to go across the way to angle seven. So angle one and angle seven are alternate exterior. If I do the same thing with two here, I have to go across the way to angle eight. And these are alternate exterior angles. Last but not least, uh, another fun one, same side interior angles. We often call these, uh, we might call these consecutive interior, although for the most part in my classes, we will say same side interior. Breaking it down similarly, we are talking about interior angles. Once again, it is interior, so that means we are inside the two lines. Inside the two lines, and we're same side, so that means same side of transversal. And just like we did with the other ones, Let's find some examples. So same side interior are inside the two lines, but they're on the same side of the transversal itself. Suppose that I start with angle four. Now I want to stay inside these two lines, and if I'm on the same side of that transversal there, which I will now highlight, I'm just flowing on over to angle five. These two are same side interior because they're on the left side of that transversal line, my line T. And they're inside those two lines that are being intersected. So the same thing flows with number three, or angle three. If I wanted to find the same side interior with angle three, I just stay inside the two lines and to the right of my transversal, so it's angle six. If you can break down these words to what they mean, uh, namely, oh, it's, it's interior, so it's inside the lines, same side, so it's back to back, or alternate interior, alternate exterior. If you can break those words down, you'll figure out what angle relationship you're working with and where these angles are real quick. Speaking of working with these angle relationships, let's go ahead and do an example where we have to name an example of each. And notice, if you will, that down towards the bottom, we are going to have to find an example of vertical angles and an example of a linear pair. Now, you probably still can see the page in front of you. I cannot, but that's okay. We're going to get through this together. If I look up there, we're going to use the diagram to identify an example of each type of angle pair. First, we're going to start off with corresponding angles. Try to think ahead of me or right with me, if you will. Don't lag behind. Corresponding angles means basically same position or corresponding position. If I choose angle 4 here, I'm going to do angle 4. I'm looking for an angle that's in essentially the bottom left. Hopefully you're already saying it's got to be angle 8. If we go for a pair of alternate interior angles, well that limits what all I can go for because I'm just going to be inside the lines, right? So if I'm going for alternate interior, say I'm working with angle 3. Well, I'm still inside the lines. Remember that I have to go across the way. That's going to be angle 5. That's going to be my second alternate interior angle. Now I have same side interior angles. Once again, I'm working with the interior. So I'm going to be inside these. And maybe I'm working with angle 4 this time. Angle 4, but now it's same side interior. Same side meaning it's on the same side of the transversal. Well, there's only one angle that fits that bill. It's angle 5. Perfect. We need to find a pair of alternate exterior angles. Well, alternate exterior means 
outside, so we're discarding that internal piece. Maybe I'm going to work with angle one this time. I actually feel like doing angle one. If I'm going to do alternate exterior, remember, I have to go across the way with this one, if you will, or be on the opposite side of the transversal. So that, in this case, means angle seven. Next up, we have to find a pair of vertical angles. And honestly, wherever you find these is up to you. You could come up with a number of them. If I said I was working with angle five, you would say that the angle vertical to this is angle seven. And there's, a, there's like eight different examples we could use for those vertical angles, or at least four. So definitely get creative if you came up with another one. Linear pair. Remember that a linear pair are just two angles next to each other that make a straight line. In this case, maybe I want to go with this bottom line here, and maybe I just want to go this way. Those two angles are angle 5 and angle 6. Those two are an example of linear pair. Last but not least, have you remembered, do you remember what we call line T here? Line T is called a transversal. That is the line that intersects two or more other lines at different points. This is our start to chapter three. Everything that we do in this chapter will be based off of something that we did in this lesson. We're going to focus a whole lot on these angle relationships that we talked about up here. So these are really important. Uh, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, make sure that you give yourself a little bit of time to work with these, find some examples, um, and definitely get your homework done. It's to help you practice with this. If we know these angle relationships now, then our work in 3.2 and 3.3 will be even easier. All right? So as always, hopefully uh, this made some sense. If you have any questions, reach out to your local geometry teacher. Otherwise, I'll see you later.